Welcome to my channel. In the previous video, we learned how to reuse our code with mo functions. So in this video, we'll learn how to reuse our code with models. Models are used to group functions, variables, and other things into more powerful programs. Some models are built into Python, and others can be downloaded separately. When you're using models, you'll find them useful for writing games. Examples of those models are Turtle, Thinker, Pygame, Time, System, Random, and much, much more. Models can be used to do all sorts of things. For example, if you're, creating, if you're designing a simulation game and you wanted the world of the game to change around you realistically, you could calculate the current game and time using a built-in model called Time. Import Time. Oops. Import time. Here, the import command is used to tell Python that we want to use the model time. Then we can use the commands that are available in this model. We will be using the sleep function, which will make Python stop for the amount of seconds you type in. To use this function, we need to put time, so Python will know that we're using something in the sleep in the time model. Then we put a period. The reason we put a period is to separate the model name from the function we want to use. And then we put the function we want to use, which in this case is sleep. And if we're using the model sleep, we also put brackets. And inside those brackets, we put the amount of seconds you want Python to stop for. Time dot sleep three. So this line of code will tell Python to wait three seconds. Let's make a program and use what we just learned. In this program, we will get a Pokemon every three seconds for 10 times. We'll need a loop, a variable, and a time model. So import turtle. Well, actually, import time, sorry. Import time. Death time test. Poke Pokemons equals one. Four X in range zero comma ten print you have a percent S Pokemons percent Pokemon. Pokemons equals Pokemons plus one. Time dot sleep three. Make sure your program is exactly combined and then call time test and wait 30 seconds. Let's see what happens. Okay, so in this error, it's my error, but I didn't print S here. So let me copy this really quickly and paste it back. Okay, so call time test. And you'll notice that every three seconds, you'll get the program will display a message that you have a number of Pokemons. Every time the program displays a message, it's the number will be one more than the last time it displayed a message. So do that until it reaches 10 and then the program will stop. That's because that we made a loop that makes, that does it 10 times. 
So you'll see it stops at 10 Pokemons and the program has finished. Now suppose that you want to ask someone your age using their program. You can do this with a print statement in the says model, which is short for system. To test this out, let's import the system model. Import system. Oh, sorry, import system, the shortened version. In the system model, there's a special object called student, which makes a function called readLine. The readLine function is used to read a line of text until you press the return key. To test this out, let's enter the following code in the shell. Print SYS, the short and resume system, dot student dot read line. If you type some words and then press enter, the words will be printed out in the shell. I have a Pikachu. Let's take a fun look at these lines of code. Print how many Pokemons do you have? If, wait, sorry, Pokemons equals to 10. If Pokemons is greater than 5, print I have more than 5 Pokemons. Else print I have less than five Pokemon. Instead of assigning variable Pokemon to ten, we can assign variable Pokemon to whatever the person running the program wants. Let's do that in this program and we'll store the text that we just typed in in a function called A. Def A. Prince, how many Pokemon do you have? Prince, enter how much Pokemon do you have? Pokemons equals input. Well, it input. It is short for integer, to be specific. If Pokemons equal is greater than five, print I have more than five Pokemons. Else, print, I have less than five Pokemons. Let's test if it works. A. So if we enter five, and then we should get, I have five or less. Well, I have less than five. And if we enter 10, 
in this try, we should get I have more than five. And the final model I will tell you today is the random model. The random model is a model that chooses something random out of the options you give it. For example, if you give it an option to give you a random number 1 through 10, it might give you any of the numbers that are between 1 or 10, including 1 or 10. So let's try it to choose a random number 1 through 10. First, we need to import the random model. So let's do that now. Import. Okay, so import random. Next, let's use the function random dot randant. R A N D I N T. One comma ten. One is for the um, one and ten are the numbers that the program has to choose between. So we got the number two. We could have got a different number like three, four, five, one, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's try it again and see if we get something else. Random bar randoms one comma ten. This time we got five. See we got now five. It's not really all what random can do. There's much more to random. For example, instead of just picking random numbers, it can pick a random item out of a list. To prove this, let's create our list. Def random test. Pokemons equals Pikachu, Pika, Mew, Mewtwo, Charmander, and Charizard. Import random. Oops. Okay, so print random choice. Pokemons. Let's change this to see. And now, if we, and let's try it. Random test. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. This is my bad. Let me really quickly change what I did wrong. If you haven't noticed what I did wrong, I put in. Instead of this, I had to put a dot, so there we go. Random test. Okay, so we got Charizard, but we can try it again and we can probably get something else, right? So let's try it again. Random test. This time we got Charmander. And now, finally, to end off the video, here's my solution to the challenge I gave you in the last video. Once again, your answer does not have to be exactly like mine, it just has to work. So, import turtle. T equals turtle dot pen. Death spiral. 
é Axon to the Day. Q equals 10. Um, uh, 4x in range. E times 10. Oh, I put right here also T dot reset. So 4x in range. D times 10. Then put T dot speed. Zero. Uh, this thing, this thing, and this thing is optional. It's just gonna. But it just helps our program run faster and look more clear. T dot forward. D. T dot left 90. Well, actually, Q, sorry. Um, then we do D plus D minus. 0.1 and uh, if we mix spiral if we call spiral and here we can put its size um let's do 30 right now you'll see you'll notice that my turtle runs faster that's because I put t dot speed 0 and put t dot reset so when I make the spiral again. So I put this t dot reset because if I call it again, this thing won't be here. You see um, the whole thing? The previous spiral won't be there. So that's why I put t dot reset. In this video, I have one challenge and one optional challenge. The challenge is to make a game where I give in two variables. You add the two variables and return the answer. If it is correct, the program prints correct, continues. Correct. If, it, if it's wrong, the program prints wrong and stops. My optional challenge is to create a guessing game. It's basically where the computer chooses a number 1 through 100. And you have to try to guess it. If you get it too high, the program prints too high. If you get it too low, the program prints too low. If you get it correct, the program prints correct and stops. Thank you for watching my video. If you liked my video, why don't you put a like? But if you love my video, why don't you subscribe so you can see more awesome videos?